Somebody grab the doors. And, uh, hey, Robin. Yes. All right. We are here. Dan Berger's in the house. A round of applause for Dan. Um, thanks for coming. This is uh, Building Online Communities with WordPress. Um, I'm, uh, my name is Toby Krines. I've been building WordPress sites for about six years, and the last three years I've been doing a lot of online community stuff with WordPress. Um, so I'm here to uh, just kind of share what I've learned, uh, you know, answer any questions you have, and hopefully engage in some sort of a, a dialogue internally here amongst ourselves in that regard. Um, so how many people here are actively either managing or have a toe in managing a community you've built online? About half. Um, what are uh, some of the reasons why the rest of you are here? <laughs> Ser seriously. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, but seriously. What, what <laughs> I, I did dunk a basketball three times, if, if, it, if anyone's interested. Um, you, mm -hmm. So you're looking for more uses for it, for good tips out there? Yeah, you had a project that maybe you could have used it on. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, that's uh, different, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, not quite, but um, hopefully, well, yeah, anyway. Um, any, other, <laughs> any, any other reasons you're here that uh, haven't been brought up yet? The developer. What specific questions do you have uh, about, you know, WordPress in particular, but online communities? Yes. Anyone else? Get started. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Increased growth. Monetize. What are the tools? Uh, me. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call it migrate users to new platform. migrate from big dogs, that's what I call those guys. How do what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Anything else? All right. Cool. Um, one thing I've learned from, so I manage an, a few, well, I would say two big online communities and then a, a number of just like, I have one that's 12 people, it's my family, and it's a closed community. We share our, our, the music that we all write and record, we upload our files and share it internally. So we do some stuff and we, I can answer questions about that. But I also manage some uh, bigger, higher profile, uh, two in particular that are, that are bigger and higher profile and you know, 
with, th with those, I worry about security and stuff, so we can touch on some of that stuff. Um, one is uh, uh, Lavender Magazine, uh, and the other is uh, United Way has a site called United Front that's uh, uh, very targeted, but um, kind of positioned in a way that is important to the organization. Um, so one thing I've learned from doing all this for the last few years is that uh, the problems are highly technical. So we're going to run into server problems, code problems, software being out of date, upgrade problems, you get white screens when you click the upgrade button. Um, but at the end of the day, none of that matters because the, 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 the real, um, all the rewards are people-based, right? People, if people feel good about the experience, they're participating. Um, you know, so even though all, most, most of the problems are technical, the, the, um, the rewards are people, you know? So, so when I always keep that in mind when I'm thinking about what software to use and how to integrate different things. Um, so why don't we start with, um, let's start with the tools uh, in, in regards to WordPress. So I wrote a blog post this morning that I'll share with y'all. You can go to themightymo.com and click on updates and you'll see this post. And in this post I have everything that I'm gonna talk about today. Um, I have the, this list of, uh, must have plugins that I put on every site, and that's this list here. So for you techies, you can look through that, go to my blog and get that. Um, and if you scroll down, there's a, uh, two tools in particular that I found particularly useful. Uh, one is BuddyPress. One is BuddyPress. So BuddyPress is a, a suite of online tools that basically turns your site into Facebook in terms of functionality. So it has the wall, it has, um, messaging, internal messaging, and all sorts of stuff. But the cool thing is it's a WordPress plugin, so you can install it with one click. Uh, it will soon work with any theme you have running, and you can do anything you want with it. It's WordPress, it's open source. Um, so it, it's, it's really cool in that sense. So like in, my, in our case with United Way, we have a BuddyPress site that we totally lock down unless you've been invited. Um, you know, it's not in Google or anything. Um, so you have all those advantages versus going you know, so rather than using Facebook, we now have a walled-in system uh, that we now control. We, we own the data, so we don't have any concerns about, I mean, our concerns are now just technical rather than what's Facebook gonna do with our data concerns. Um, so BuddyPress is a big one. They, there's also a companion plugin called BBPress that is bulletin board. So what BuddyPress is, is basically all the Facebook stuff. So you have, uh, you know, the profiles, you have emails, um, forums, bulletin boards, and just a suite of other tools. What uh, BBPress is, is just the forum. So basically you get the people in the forum, the, however you wanna display a forum there. But um, so a lot of times I will use just BBPress. A lot of times I'll use BuddyPress because it has a really sweet profile feature to it. So like if I have just a WordPress site that I need people, like to have faces on there and uh, descriptions of people, I'll use BuddyPress. And I'll just have to use that one feature out of BuddyPress. Or a lot of times if I need a forum, I'll use BuddyPress and just turn off everything else because I can install it with a click and just use this functionality that I need. It's actually quite robust. And, um, and in particular, people are using BuddyPress for the profiles a lot. So I would say if you have a site that needs profiles, user profiles, check out BuddyPress. Um, and then there's a, a fourth plugin here, it's called Members and it's, uh, just a, a written by a highly respected plugin. So if you have a, a WordPress site that you need to partition off portions of the site to certain users, that's a great free open source plugin that I use all the time. It's highly configurable uh, from the code end. Any questions about any, anything I've said so far? Yes. Yeah, so mobile has nothing to do with what we're talking about. These all work on mobile, it's all on the front end. So all these tools are back end, they display data on the front end, and so what you do with the front end is just the same thing, same, the same concerns you would have with your regular site. So it doesn't add any additional concerns, because it's all mobile, I mean it's just HTML that, that's outputted. So it's gonna work on iPhone, iPad, same as any other WordPress site. Yep, it's a plugin. Um, and, and BuddyPress actually has it integrated with it, so they're, they're managed by the same person. All right. Um, you know, these big dog things are interesting because 
a lot of what I do in my, my business is, is help people figure out when to use the big dogs and when to not. For example, um, we have the WordPress user group, mspwp.com. We have a website. We use the website to organize our, some of our internal events. So we have a, a buddy press installed there where we have discussions happening. So we planned a big event in November and we had all our discussions in the buddy press forum. And uh, it's cool because it has email notifications integrated with it, but it's totally closed off. So we don't need to share everything we're doing with the world. And most people probably don't care anyway. Um, so we also have our Google group, which is where we have uh, roughly 500 people on our Google group. They're all local WordPress enthusiasts. And so what we use the Google group for is to manage these mass email lists that we, you know, it's just a big email list. And so in my opinion, I made a decision a while back when we started the group to go with Google for that because I felt like to manage the server, like a big email server like that, to, to push out potentially 10,000 emails a day could be costly and a pain in my neck, you know, when something breaks and, you know, I've got complaints coming in. So there was a question earlier, when to use the big dogs? That's a, a real world case where I decided I'm going with the big dog because this is gonna be hard <laughs> uh, to do well. And Google does that pretty well. Um, similarly, a lot of times people wanna like, there's, a, there's a, uh, a, this urge that people have to push all the functionality into their website. So things like shopping carts, um, uh, definitely like email lists. <coughs> And these are uh, events, calendars. These are things that are like hard to pull off well. They're, and in addition to that, there's tons of other people who are doing it really well, totally free. Eventbrite, great for events, right? Uh, you can just go in there and start holding an event. If you were to try to pull off Eventbrite in WordPress, you'd have a much poorer experience or you'd have to code for 10,000 hours and build the best experience, you know? <laughs> so I like when, the question is when to use the big dogs. In my opinion, you use them when it makes sense. If you got a huge development team that can support some complex event ticketing system, it might make sense for you to build that system. But um, in general, I say go with the big dogs where it makes sense. And um, uh, it, yes, Ian. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could pull up the MSPWP one. Sure. So if you don't know, we have this local user group, MSP WordPress, and everybody's invited. Uh, we have a meetup that's associated with it, but all our action happens on Google. So this is, uh, at its core, it's just a WordPress site. Um, so we have a front end that's WordPress, and then uh, on the back end is all the BuddyPress stuff. So. If I log in here. Yeah, so BuddyPress comes with a prepackaged theme that you can use, but it'll work with any theme in the next version that's gonna be released. You could get it to work right now, but um, the next version, which is it's gonna come, it's in beta two right now, so it should come out any day really. Um, it's just gonna work. Um, with a, you know, you probably need to tweak it a little, but uh, like I said, BuddyPress has nothing to do with responsive. It's all the same. You're the, it uses WordPress, the WordPress theming engine. So if you can build a WordPress theme, this is gonna be a piece of cake. Um, but what BuddyPress adds is, um, let's go to slash groups. And so here we have some groups. So Buddy, what BuddyPress adds in terms, so it has functionality. In fact, some of the functionality goes beyond Facebook and all that. Right here we have three, groups, job board looking for work in Minneapolis, Word Up Minneapolis. So if I were to click into one of these, each group has a bunch of stuff associated it with it, such as a wall, um, uh, members, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. You can see, you can send invites, you can change your email options. Uh, you can uh, basically tweet people, so I could list something here. And if I, if I put something on the wall, it'll blast out to everybody who's a member of this group. Um, and this is all plug and play. There's nothing special here. But so, I mean, at its core, it's, it's just a uh, Facebook. And the tools don't excite me as much as the, really the, the no question, you know, when not to use them. Because <laughs> I feel like anyone can use and build really anything. But where I've found that, uh, where we've really created value is in scaling this back and saying, um, you know, we're gonna remove the wall. We're gonna remove instant messaging. Um, and, and I guess if I were to impart any knowledge, it would be, uh, to really start with nothing 
and build out a single feature that's really good for your community. Um, for United, the, the United Way site, we're, we do, um, we started with all these features and we did just over the years, we've just stripped out and stripped out and what we found is that the user experience has gotten better. So people are participating more because it's easier to use and there's less options. Um, yes, sir. Well, it depends how, like, what are you using for the community right now? Is it uh, comments or what's your community? What's the interactions? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you could install BuddyPress if you're, because it sounds like you're using posts and pages. Yeah, I mean, that's not, this isn't going to affect posts or pages whatsoever. If you wanted to bring those posts and pages into a BuddyPress group, you would need to figure that piece out. But, but by, I mean, installing this doesn't do anything to the front end of WordPress. This is like a part, uh, it's basically a silo inside of WordPress that uses the same users. I think, I think you're asking the wrong question and the, the right question is uh, what's wrong with your current forum? You know, what, what, feature, what feature do you want that doesn't exist, you know? Um, and if there's a feature BuddyPress has that that doesn't, either think of upgrading what you have to, you know, build on a plug into that or then you can go through the process, okay, maybe we do need to migrate. If so, then what's that entail? Uh, well, yes and no. It, by default, it's a multi-site plugin. Um, so it works on a multi-site installation. What it doesn't do by default is have a different BuddyPress install for each site. Um, there's ways to do it, but it's, uh, I'd be careful with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Any questions about this uh, big dog thing? The uh, server load and security question, in general with stuff, <laughs> and if you don't have a valuable property, this is my, my I get pushed back on this, but I think like the, it's better to go fast and quick than to worry about security and all that, uh, unless you have a valuable property that you need to like maintain. So I always think like, just keep great backups and if your site gets hacked, you just go to a different server or something and do it cheap and quick, unless you have something that's valuable that needs, you know, that has a ton of eyes looking at it. Um, now that said, some of the, uh, the things I recommend here for security, um, these plugins are basically, a lot of them are for that reason. So backup buddy, it's gonna back your stuff up. Um, you can set up schedules. Infinite WP is the same thing. It's just another alternate backup system that I always, I always get them both going. And you can, you, both of those will back up to S3 and uh, any repository you can think of probably. Uh, bad behavior is a firewall plugin. So what that does is it stops bad people from vi even accessing your content. So it's looking at IPs and behavior of, of users to say, oh, this guy's trying to log in five times in a row and it boots them out. Uh, similar uh, word fence. Uh, where did I put WordFence? I don't know if, is it up there? Oh, there it is. Bad behavior in WordFence. Very similar plugin. It's scanning your site. Um, there's a, uh, a company called Securi that um, is like the, they're at the forefront of the WordPress security companies right now. So I would encourage you to look into those if you're really interested in that. Bulletproof. Mm -hmm. Yep, better WP security. So I, better WP, I didn't like Bulletproof's uh, use of advertising. They've been doing some pushes, so I don't use them, but, and I don't use better WP because I get a lot of false positives. Uh, meaning like we have people who should be viewing the site, but they end up getting a white screen because they think it's an error, so, or they think that's bad behavior.
great point. So better WP security will give you a, a nice clean interface. You don't need to know any code or anything. It'll say, ch check this if you wanna take this step to make your site more secure. Check this if you wanna do this to make your site more secure. So I do highly recommend it for that. Community policing is always a fun one. Um, so the, the one thing about any online community that's kind of like people don't always understand is that it takes a lot of time and energy to make it work. Um, for our, so we have about a between 1,100 and 1,200 people on one of the communities I manage and we have two full-time employees managing that community. Um, and you know, so it, that kind of tells you about the scale that you know, you could feasibly have two people managing 50,000, but um, depending on your community, in this case, it's highly engaged. And, um, but it takes a lot of people. So they're, every day, even though we have CAPTCHA going and like bad behavior, there's humans that are going there and registering as spammers and they're getting through all of our systems. They're now on our site. So we have, so, I mean, every day we're deleting, I don't know, 10 accounts on the United Way site to get in there. And it, and it just takes a person to look at them and go, this doesn't seem right. They're getting deleted, you know, and it's just like, you need human eyes, you can't automate this stuff. Um, and, and then in regards to the, to the actual community, I think it, it takes just the highly engaged people, highly engaged people to, to, to manage the community. You know, like, so you, you have to seed conversations, you have to make sure people are adhering to standards, uh, whatever those standards are. Um, so I, I, I manage the MSP WordPress user group and we have a Google group, it gets lots of action. And, I really try to stand off on that, and a lot of time David is the, my policeman in there, and other people too will step up when someone does something that is kind of like we, we're like, is this right? when I think th is this right? Usually, someone from the community will step up and like say, "Hey, is this right that this guy did this?" And uh, so, when you have a good, uh, robust community, that's the type of thing that happens. But you also need to, as a community manager, you need to empower people to do that. Um, and so, a lot of people where they fail, I think, is that. They want to be hands-on and uh, they want to control everything. And one, one thing that I re recommend is to choose the people that are going to be in your community. So be highly selective about those people. But once they're in, you got to let them run and you got to, you know, just, you got to let them dictate things most of the time in terms of community standards and things like that. Um, and you have to empower them to, to stand up and like, like, uh, and, and say when something's not going right. Tim. Um, it does to a degree. Um, it does, I think it, it, it does with, there's like certain, I think it hooks into the wall functionality, but not the forum functionality. So it's, it's probably going to get there, but, um, the, the thing about, so the next version of BuddyPress, I think is going to increase the user base exponentially for BuddyPress because it's going to be plug and play. Great. It looks great. Works on my theme. And because right now you have to take steps to get there. Um, so I, I, I imagine once it has the bigger user base that it'll, it'll be fully integrated. And the guy who manages the project is uh, one of the higher ups at uh, Automatic, the company that manages WordPress. So. Yes, sir. No, um, it doesn't. I, I imagine there's a plugin for that, but uh, I haven't used it. And, and one thing to keep in mind, this is WordPress, totally open source, so you could certainly build it if, you know, there's nothing stopping anyone from doing that. Any other questions on community policing or thoughts? Anyone have experience with this and have anything to share? Had a bad experience with community policing? Yes, sir. For them, they were really concerned about data and just the reaction of people to saying, hey, I'm, I'm going to put my stuff on Facebook. A, a lot of the conversations we have on that site are sensitive things that um, is happening like at the high level of nonprofits and like um, so there might be five directors of nonprofits having a conversation on the site at one time and they don't necessarily want it to be totally public and they're afraid of 
we were afraid of what Google might do. You know, all of a sudden they're getting targeted ads for who knows what, you know. So that was our thought process there. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. One thing you lose when you wall it off is that you get no SEO value out of it. And that was a decision we consciously made. We go, well, we don't really care as much. We just, you know. I did have on my, regarding best practices, I have um, three keys to success, and I very rarely do three keys to anything. Um, <laughs> But I was thinking about it this morning. I'm like, what if I had to choose three? And these are the three I came up with. Um, already mentioned, well, the third one I didn't mention. Uh, so we have define and be defined, see discussions. And then the third one is technical problems, address them right now, right now. You get an email back from someone that says, what does this email mean? That's a technical problem uh, for a number of reasons that you could get blacklisted. You know, if enough of them go, hey, this is spam, then you're gonna end up on the blacklist. Um, uh, also, they're going to they're going to participate less less if they're disengaged. Especially, you know, we uh, when I say it takes two full time people, a lot of this is just addressing concerns that come in uh, to keep these people engaged. Because somebody might say, "My password doesn't work," and they're on the wrong website, you know, and like, <laughs> and so we work through these issues like on a daily basis. Where we had a lady the other day who was saying, "All I see is white," and then there's some links, and we're going, "What is this?" She was looking at Google. She typed unitedfrontmn.org into Google, and that's what she thought the site was. And so, you know, she's looking at the Google search results page. And, <laughs> and this, is, this is what, you know, these are usable, usability issues that, you know, we jump on, and we, we want her engaged, so we're all over it. Um, uh, so I say any, you know, especially with smaller communities, if you need five people to get engaged, you need to be on the technical stuff. So you need both, you need the technical expertise, but you also need the people expertise to be responding. Yeah, it's the same as WordPress. So it's all the same. So if you can do it on WordPress, which you can, you can uh, do it on BuddyPress. Yeah, uh, we don't do that yet. Uh, uh, because we're actively on it with the United Way site anyway, like that we don't worry about it because we, at least we know everyone in there as people we have invited. Um, but yeah, I imagine the way you just suggested would be a great way to do a search of your database for when they registered and when they last committed and compare and, and that would be a, a good, good way. Or it might also be a way to re-engage them and say, you logged in, but you haven't done anything. So maybe that's a, an opportunity there. Yeah. Uh, all over the web right now. Um, I, I use Kickass VPS for, they're a, a company in St. Paul. They use atomic data centers. Um, I like them. They're, uh, you know, the real people in St. Paul that I can call and email. Um, uh, so I use them for uh, a number of things. I use, for my personal crappy sites, I just have a cheap VPS at HostGator, you know, that I don't care if it gets hacked. And um, uh, I also have, I use WP Engine for a couple sites. They're a WordPress specific uh, hosting site. Um, and then, yeah, I guess there's a couple, I use DreamHost, but I'm trying to get everything off there. Uh, yes, sir. I have no 
idea. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't do any reading in the area. Just live it, man. What did Pee Wee Herman say? I don't have to do it. I don't have to. I don't have to see it. I lived it. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to see it, Dottie. <laughs> lived it. <laughs> um, so sorry, I don't have any great community management resources. I'm, I'm a WordPress guy, really, and uh, I just really enjoy community development and stuff. So. Um, Anyone else have suggestions for thought leaders? Any other questions about um, online community management or you know, just general ones? Analytics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eric and I uh, built a, an analytics tool that we pitched the United Way, and uh, they didn't. Uh, wanted at the time. I think they might now, so I might repitch it. But um, right now, there's there's very few tools, and certainly no good tools, that to help with analytics on the back end of WordPress. Um, Eric and I have like a, a nice little thing we're building. But um, when you think of like who are my most popular users, who are my best users, um, and a lot of it's qualitative. So we need to figure out what that algorithm is. And, so those sorts of tools don't exist. I, I think there's a huge opportunity for that right now in WordPress. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm not the guy to answer that type of question, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess the answer is yes. I'm sure there are all sorts of. And I think as what I generally do as a beginner, um, not as a beginner, but as someone who runs a business and has these things on my website, I generally go to the big dogs and copy and paste, find, replace, and you know, cross my fingers. Uh, uh, now, you know, with United Way, they have uh, they have lawyers. They they figured all that out. But um, I guess I'm not intimate with those legal hurdles and whatnot. Yeah, so I've been chatting with uh, Schwanz about this, and they have um, you. They have this. They have this online system where you can like participate and get points that buy you free ice cream, basically. Um, and what we were pitching to them is like, your current system sucks. Let's make it good. Here's a tool we can use and build on that. Um, so there's nothing stopping us from doing it. It's just uh, getting a company's IT team to agree to let the data pass between an open source framework and their .NET solution. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I see what you're saying, yeah, yeah. There's a plugin called Achievements, and it's built for BuddyPress, um, and it gets you started on that path. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's it's a great start, and it's run by one of the core BuddyPress developers. Um, 
there's also uh, a project I'm working on right now that has uh, uses Mozilla's open badge system, which is uh, still sucks, but it's getting there. Um, it's there's supposedly this summer it's going to be a lot better, so it's something to look into, or maybe an alternative to Mozilla badges. Maybe there's uh, something. To look into.